I4 Technolab Private Limited. An ISO 9001 to 2015 certified and leading sustainable IT service provider. Presence Tutorial of Smart Contract Using Solidity. The purpose of this course is to give you complete understanding and hands of experience with smart contracting using Solidity for blockchain technology. In Chapter 8, the Ethereum Virtual Machine covers an overview of the Ethereum Virtual Machine and demystifies various Ethereum Virtual Machine jargons. We are going to discuss the following topics. EVM Overview Accounts, Transactions, Gas Storage, Memory and the Stack Instruction Set, Message Calls Delegate Call, Call Code and Libraries Logs, create, self-destruct. What is EVM? The EVM Ethereum Virtual Machine is the runtime environment for smart contracts in Ethereum. It is not only sandboxed but actually completely isolated, which means that code running inside the EVM has no access to network, file system or other processes. Smart contracts even have limited access to other smart contracts. Ethereum has been called a global computer because every node in the Ethereum network runs the EVM and executes identical instructions as all of the other nodes in order to achieve and maintain consensus about the state of the system. What is Ethereum blockchain? The fundamental structure of how cryptocurrency work applies to both Ethereum and Bitcoin, however, each technology has a different goal. Bitcoin is strictly a digital currency, and mostly functions as a form of payment. Ethereum takes a different approach, payment. Ethereum takes a different approach, and functions as a platform through which people can use tokens to create and run applications and create smart contracts. So, let's stop there. You may be wondering, what is a smart contract? The smart contract is one of the major differences between Ethereum and other types of digital currencies. It's basically a contract, but instead of being written physically or in a digital format, it's written in code. The creator creator then uploads the contract into the blockchain. Progress on the terms of the contract is tracked and stored in the public ledger, which makes the details surrounding that contract tamper-proof. But how? The contract code is structured as if-then statements. For example, let's say that you rent a vehicle from a company that uses Ethereum. A smart contract is generated and once you deliver the agreed amount of currency, the system automatically sends a digital key to unlock the car. This entire process is carried out on the blockchain and everyone can see what has been done. A few more benefits of this blockchain technology include Safety, at the heart of all blockchain technologies are safety and security. This system prevents a third party from altering or changing the data. Downtime and safety, apps won't go down or be switched off, but instead switched off, but instead the data is always available because it runs on open source software. Censoring and corruption prevention, Ethereum and Ethereum mining is based on a peer-to-peer -peer network that is formed around principles that make censorship virtually impossible. Actions and gas. Accounts. Accounts broadly concerned with the measurement and communication of financial information. Account Types There are two types of account in Ethereum which share the same address space. External accounts that are controlled by public-private key pairs, that is, humans. Contract accounts which are controlled by the code stored together with the account. The address of an external account is determined from the public key while the address of a contract is determined at the time the contract is created, it is derived from the creator address and the number of transactions sent from that address, the so-called nonce. Regardless of whether or not the account stores code, the two types are treated equally by the EVM. Every account has a persistent key value store mapping 256-bit words to 256-bit words called storage. 
Furthermore, every account Furthermore, every account has a balance in Ether which can be modified by sending transactions that include Ether. What is a transaction? A transaction is a message that is sent from one account to another account, which might be the same or empty, see below. It can include binary data, which is called payload, and Ether. If the target account contains code, that code is executed and the payload is provided as input data. If the target account is not set, the transaction does not have a recipient or the recipient is set to null, the transaction creates a new contract. As already mentioned, the address of that contract is not the zero address but an address derived from the sender and its number of transactions sent, the nonce. The payload of such a contract creation transaction is taken to be EVM bytecode and executed. The output data of this execution is perconded. The output data of this execution is permanently stored as the code of the contract. This means that in order to create a contract, you do not send the actual code of the contract, but in fact code that returns that code when executed. Note. While a contract is being created, its code is still empty. Because of that, you should not call back into the contract under construction until its constructor has finished executing. What that transaction is charged with a certain amount of gas. Upon creation, each transaction is charged with a certain amount of gas, whose purpose is to limit the amount of work that is needed to execute the transaction and to pay for this execution at the same time. While the EVM executes the transaction, the gas is gradually depleted according to specific rules. Gas price is a value set by the creator of the transaction. The gas price is a value set by the creator of the transaction, who has to pay gas price, gas up front from the sending account. If some gas is left after the execution, it is refunded to the creator in the same way. Out of gas exception is triggered. If the gas is used up at any point, it would be negative, an out-of-gas exception is triggered, which reverts all modifications are made to the state in the current call frame. And call frame. Storage. Memory and the stack. Areas to store data in EVM. The Ethereum virtual machine has three areas where it can store data, storage, memory and the stack, which are explained in the following paragraphs. What is storage? Each account has a data area called storage, which is persistent between function calls and transactions. Storage is a key value store that maps 256-bit words to 256-bit words. It is not possible to enumerate storage from within a contract, it is comparatively costly to read, and even more to initialize and modify storage. Because of this cost, you should minimize what you store in persistent storage to what the contract needs to run. Store data like derived calculations, caching, and aggregates outside of the contract. A contract can neither read nor write, a contract can neither read nor write to any storage apart from its own. It costs 20,000 gas to set a storage location from zero to a value, and 5,000 gas to change its value. You do get some gas back for resetting a location to zero. The reason is that a contract storage values are stored on the blockchain forever which has a real-world cost. It's also 200 gas to read the word, compared with 3 for memory. So for storage, use it only when you really must. When must you use storage? For values that have to be persisted between different contract calls. For example, the balances of accounts for an ERC-20 token. Storage updates are state updates of your contract and are not really for temporary data. Storage of one contract can also be read by another contract, or by querying the blockchain without running the terrain without running the contract. You can think of it like hard disk or SSD. Storage retains its value when the computer's not running. What is, what is memory? The second data area is called memory, of which a contract obtains a freshly cleared instance for each message call. 
Memory is linear and can be addressed at byte level but reads are limited to a width of 256 bits, while writes can be either 8 bits or 256 bits wide. Memory is expanded by a word, 256 bit, when accessing, either reading or writing, a previously untouched memory word, that is any offset within a word. At the time of expansion, the costing gas must be paid. Memory is costlier the larger it grows, it scales quadratically. The memory is only accessible during contract execution, once execution, once execution is finished, its contents are discarded. When should you use memory? Pretty much for everything non-permanent. It's the general workhorse. You can think of it like a computer's RAM. It vanishes when the computer is not running. EVM is not a register machine but a stack machine. The EVM is not a register machine but a stack machine, so all computations are performed on a data area called the stack. Maximum size of 1024 elements and contains words of 256 bits. It has a maximum size of 1024 elements and contains words of 256 bits. Access to the stack is limited to the top end in the following way. It is possible to copy one of the topmost 16 elements to the top of the stack or swap the topmost element with one of the 16 elements below it. All other operations take the topmost two, or one, or more, depending on the operation, elements from the stack and push the result onto the stack. Of course it is possible to move stack elements to storage or memory in order to get deeper access to the stack, but it is not possible to just access arbitrary elements deeper in the stack it is possible to just access arbitrary elements deeper in the stack without first removing the top of the stack. Costs of storing data on the stack are similar to those for memory. The costs of storing data on the stack are similar to those for memory. Sometimes there will be less overhead from having to push memory addresses to the stack, sometimes there will be more overhead as the compiler has to shuffle things around on the stack. If you run out of stack then contract execution will fail. The compiler generally uses it for intermediate values in computations and other scratch quantities. The stack also does not persist after contract termination. It set. Message calls. What is the instruction set? The instruction set of the EVM is kept minimal in order to avoid incorrect or inconsistent implementations which could cause consensus problems. All instructions operate on the basic data type, 256-bit words or on slices of memory, or other byte arrays. The usual arithmetic, bit, logical, and comparison operations are present. Conditional and unconditional jumps are possible. Furthermore, contracts can access relevant properties of the current block like its number and timestamp. What is message called? Contracts can call other contracts. Contracts can call other contracts or send ether to non-contract accounts by the means of message calls. Message calls are similar to transactions, in that they have a source, a target, data payload, ether, gas and return data, trans data payload, ether, gas and return data. In fact, every transaction consists of a top-level message call which in turn can create further message calls. Remaining gas should be sent with the inner message call. A contract can decide how much of its remaining gas should be sent with the inner message call and how much it wants to retain. If an out-of-gas exception happens in the inner call, or any other exception, this will be signaled by an error value put onto the stack. In this case, only the gas sent together with the call is used up. In Solidity, the calling contract causes a manual exception by default in such situations, so that exceptions bubble up the call stack. Contract will receive a freshly cleared instance of memory. As already said, the called contract, which can be the same as the caller, will receive a freshly cleared instance of memory and has access to the call payload, which will be provided in a separate area called the call data. After it has finished execution, it can return data which will be stored at a location in the caller's memory pre-allocated by the caller. All such calls are fully synchronous.
Calls are limited to a def or a caller. All such calls are fully synchronous. Calls are limited to a depth of 1024, which means that for more complex operations, loops should be preferred over recursive calls. Furthermore, only 63 or 64 of the gas can be forwarded in a message call, which causes a depth limit of a little less than 1000 in practice. Detum call, or call code in libraries. What is delegate call? Delegate call basically says that I am a contract and I'm allowing, delegating, you to do whatever you want to my storage. What makes it different from a message call? This is a special variant of a message call, which is identical to a message call apart from the fact that the code at the target address is executed in the context of the calling contract and msg.sender and msg.value do not change their values. This means that a contract can dynamically load code from a different address at runtime. Storage, current address and balance still refer to the calling contract, only the code is taken from the called address. This makes it possible to implement the library feature in Solidity, reusable library code that can be applied to a contract storage. For example, in order to implement a complex data structure, you put in your pin, a structure, you put in your pin, you can access your bitcoins. Core aspects of delegate call. Some of the core aspects of delegate call that really make it stand out include incentive driven. Through the use of this platform, delegate call users have the ability to collect karma points when their questions and answers get upvoted. However, what is interesting is that unlike traditional Web 2.0 sites, delegate call allows users to redeem these points for a tradable ERC-20 currency called delegate call token on the Ethereum blockchain network. Immutable Unlike Telegram and other chat services where answered questions get erased after a certain period of time, the Delegate Call platform allows users to share their knowledge on topics related to the blockchain and Ethereum development in a more permanent form. Scalability Delegate Call is one of the few Ethereum-based apps to, Ethereum -based apps to reach production scale at a mass level. Not only that, users are completely in charge of their own data, which is not the case on sites like Quora. What is call code? Delegate call was a new opcode that was a bug fix for call code which did not preserve msg.sender and msg.value. If John invokes Robert, who does delegate call to Jane, the msg.sender in the delegate call is John, whereas if call code was used, the msg.sender would be Robert. What are the logs? It is possible to store data in a specially indexed data structure that maps up to the block level. This feature called logs is used by Solidity to implement events. Contracts cannot access log data after it has been created, but they can be efficiently accessed from outside the blockchain. Since some part of the log data is stored in Bloom filters, it is possible to search for this data in an efficient and cryptographically secure way, so network peers that do not download the whole blockchain, so-called light clients, can still find these logs. What is create? Contracts can even create other contracts using a special opcode, that is they do not simply call the zero address as a transaction would. The only difference between these creates calls and normal message calls are that the payload data is executed in the result stored as code and the caller or creator receives the address of the new stored as code and the caller or creator receives the address of the new contract on the stack. What is self-destruct? The only way to remove code from the blockchain is when a contract at that address performs the self-destruct operation. The remaining ether stored at that address is sent to a designated target and then the storage and code are removed from the state. Removing the contract, in theory, sounds like a good idea, but it is potentially dangerous as if someone sends ether to removed contracts, the ether is forever lost. Warning. Even if a contract is removed by self-destruct, it is still part of the history of the blockchain and probably retained by most Ethereum nodes. So using self-destruct is not the same as deleting data from a hard disk. Note.
Even if a contract's code does not contain a call to self-destruct, it can still perform that operation using delegate call or call code. If you want to deactivate your contracts, you should instead disable them by changing some internally. Should instead disable them by changing some internal states, which cause all functions to revert. This makes it impossible to use the contract as it returns ether immediately. Use cases for self-destruct. Contract is no longer needed. You can self-destruct it. When a contract is no longer needed, you can self-destruct it. This way, you can be sure nobody can send transactions to it and nobody can interact with it. Even if the contract itself is rendered useless by code, by updating some status variable for example, there may be for example security holes left in it. Force the contracts. Force the contract users to start using a new contract as the old one simply doesn't exist anymore. For example, when you are switching from an old token contract to a new one. Backdoor to a contract. At last resort backdoor to a contract. Contract to a contract. If the contract doesn't work as you thought it would and you have included functionality for self-destruct, you can just move it and create a better one. That's it in this video. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for our next video.